Hey guys, welcome back to another Healthy Living Obsession recipe. Today I'm going to do something I think is going to come out really tasty. I have not made this exact thing before. Uh, for those of you that watch enough of my videos, you know I love soups, I love bisques, I love creamy things, and I've done a ton of those in my Guy Stuff series, but they are not that healthy. Usually they involve a lot of heavy cream, uh, at the very least a lot of whole milk, butter, uh, all-purpose flour, thick roux, lots of good tasty stuff. But, can't have that kind of stuff, at least not for regular meals anymore, so I'm lightening it up. This is going to be a very delicious tasting dish because I'm using a lot of the traditional Thai recipe, uh, Thai ingredients. We have some pretty special stuff in here, and this is another one of those, like my crab, that isn't exactly cheap because you do need a lot of different stuff, but I think it's going to be worth it. We should end up with, oh, about a gallon and a half, maybe two gallons, somewhere right in there, worth of soup. It's going to be between 250 and 300 calories, almost fat-free, and costs us about three bucks a bowl. So I think that's going to be a winner. It's going to be easy to do, but there is a lot of prep just because of some of the stuff we have. First of all, uh, you need some Splenda. I'm going to use five of these little onions, or you can use two really big ones. Uh, a whole bunch of limes here. We need a uh, couple cups worth of juice, and we're going to be using a lot of the zest. So make sure you get fresh limes, not just a bottle of juice, because the zest is important. Uh, instead of heavy cream, I'm using fat-free half and half. I'm surprised that it works as well as it does. You know, I've used it in some other videos, and I'm completely happy with it. No problem cooking with it whatsoever. Just a little bit of olive oil here. Uh, of course, some garlic. Seasonings, very simple. Inexpensive. We've got some cilantro, some coriander, some ground red pepper, not crushed. Pepper flakes are awesome for other stuff, but not for soups. And I've got some ginger paste. You can use fresh ginger and mince it if you want to, but I'm not really using that much of it, so this is going to keep for me a lot longer than uh, a thing of ginger, and they're the same price. Then I've got uh, just a little bit of tomato paste. The lime and this, coconut milk, is what really gives it that signature flavor. Now this is really the worst thing in it. If you can find light coconut milk, please use that. I can't. You know, this is my biggest complaint with this healthy thing and eating better and all that. You can't find good stuff at a lot of grocery stores. I had to go to three different grocery stores just to find this. And you would think that this is no big deal. No. I mean, I found this, regular coconut milk, at the last one I went to. You can find coconut cream or coconut water pretty much anywhere. Anywhere that's going to have uh, a Mexican or a, a Latino section, you know, you'll find that kind of stuff, but if you can find light, definitely go ahead and use that to save yourself some calories and some fat, but it's not bad. Uh, they're calling for seven servings in a can, 93 calories, nine grams of fat. That's, you know, no big deal. We're only using four cans in the whole batch. We're just going to use a pinch of salt. We're going to coarsely chop up some celery, I'm um, using whole wheat flour instead of all-purpose. Again, used it in a ton of recipes, totally happy with it. It will change the flavor of the soup. I think it's going to make it a little bit heavier, but I don't mind. Uh, I'm all for the benefits of that over the processed flour. And, of course, we've got shrimp. I'm using six bags of the jumbo size here. You could use the medium, a little bit smaller, sometimes a little bit cheaper. These were the same price everywhere I went, so I got the bigger ones. And it is important that, number one, you use raw, not pre-cooked, and they have to be shell-on because we are going to peel them and use the shells to make our stock. So definitely get raw, shell-on, no big deal. We're just going to thaw them, wash them in some cool water, and take them out of the shells, keeping the shells. And uh, that should do it. So the first thing we're going to do is start our prep. I'm just going to chop up our veggies, and I'm going to grate the limes. I'm going to keep the juice and uh, just throw away the flesh. We're not going to use the actual insides, just the zest and the juice. 
And then I'm going to wash and peel the shrimp, keeping the shells and tails. And we're going to make a simple marinade. And the shrimp are all going to sit in the marinade in the refrigerator for about a half an hour. And then we just make the soup. It's super easy. Let's go. One last thing. I knew I forgot something. You need a dry white wine. And what I suggest, because we're doing shellfish, you want a crisp dry red. Did I say red? Dry white wine. Durr. For shellfish, I suggest a Pinot Grigio. This will give the best pairing flavor to the shrimp itself. And we're not going to use a whole bottle in it. We're only using a cup or so. So if you're a white wine fan, you can of course have some while you're cooking. Or you can have it afterwards because it pairs very well with the dish you're making. Now I can't stand white wine, so this is going to go to the wife. I am a red wine lover. I hate white wine. But I like cooking with it. I like the flavor in the food. Do not like drinking it. Okay, let's go. Here's all we're doing with the limes. It's really easy. Let's take a grater if you have a hand one that's fine. We're just taking the zest off. Just the dark green parts when you get to the lighter green inside. Stop. Okay. And it'll stick to here for the first few limes. We're just going to do this whole bunch here. This is about all we're going to need. We're going to do most of it in the marinade and uh, probably three or maybe four of them worth might split it half and half into the soup itself. This is the kind of zest that comes off. Very aromatic. A lot of oils in here. That's what we're looking after. And then to get the juice out, give it a firm roll. Cut it in half. Squeeze it upside down into your bowl. Oh man, that smells good. Bada bing, bada boom. Of course, if you have one of those fancy little citrus juicer things, you can use that too. I don't. There we go. Then you just keep going. All right, doing our shrimp, and you're starting with them frozen, so easy three-step process. First, you just want to thaw them out a little bit, and if you need to really thaw them out, wash them off under cold water, put them in a pot, put cold water in the pot, let them thaw out in there, and after about 20 minutes, they will be thawed enough where we can peel them off. Now that our shrimp is thawed, all we have to do is peel it and separate it. To peel shrimp, it's really easy. Just grip the tail here near the end. Put your fingers underneath the shell, just in front of it here, and just pinch. And you squeeze the meat right out. And the whole shell comes with it. That's it. Super simple. Shells in one bowl, shrimp in the other. Do this for the whole batch. And we're going to put those shells into the pot and cook our stock up. It's going to be delicious. Okay, our shrimp is now peeled. Just have a bowl of the shells and tails here. Making a soup stock is super easy. The concept is you're taking all the flavor that's locked into bits that you don't normally eat and transfer that into a liquid. In this case, we're going to do it into, into the wine and a little bit of water. And then you strain it out after cooking it and you get rid of all the solids. And then you have concentrated liquid of just that flavor. And it's usually done with chicken or beef bones, and you get the flavor from the marrow and everything. But with shellfish, you use the shells. You could do the same thing with crawfish or lobster. So what we have to do now is marinate our shrimp. And I'm going to do that in some Ziploc bags here. Of course, I'm doing a big batch. If you're doing a smaller one, you can do it in one bag, but I'm going to split it into uh, three gallon size bags here. First thing we're going to do is start with eight cloves of minced or crushed garlic. And then we're going to add in the juice from our limes. It's about a cup and a quarter, cup and a half, somewhere in there. I used eight limes. And then I have the zest from those limes. Limes. And I'm going to use about two thirds of this zest in the marinade, and the rest will go in the soup.
beautiful aromas coming off that. I'm always reminded of fresh cut grass when I'm doing the zest. You get that vegetable grassy f aroma and then the acidity from the juice. Really nice. All right, we are going to put in, I need a spoon. We're going to do two tablespoons of Splenda. Move these here. So, two tablespoons of Splenda. Man, I still can't get over how feather light this Splenda is. I mean, this bag, it's half full still and it weighs nothing. It's just like air. Very weird. Alright, and we're going to do four tablespoons of the ginger paste, or if you want to do it fresh grated, minced and grated. I go. All right. It's about half the tube. And then we're going to do one tablespoon of the ground red pepper, otherwise known as cayenne. Don't be scared, this isn't for heat, it's just for a little bit of zing, but mostly the flavor. Cayenne pepper, contrary to popular belief, isn't really that hot. It has a sweetness to it. But we do want to give a little bit of a kick, because that's part of the Thai spice package. Alright, let me take this top off. go. And then we're going to do our cilantro. Of course if you can get it fresh go ahead and use that but uh, I could only find it at three different places. I could only find it pre-minced. Where'd my spoon go? Right there. We're going to do four tablespoons of the cilantro. And then we're going to do six tablespoons of coriander, the ground coriander. And then all we have to do is mix this together real well, split it between our bags, split our shrimp between the bags, get it all mixed together, and we're going to let that sit in the refrigerator for 30 minutes. Just let all these flavors migrate onto the shrimp. So you can see it's real easy to make this. But man, I've been prepping. Now, mind you, of course, I'm doing the big batch, but I've been prepping over an hour. A little bit of time there just waiting for the shrimp to thaw, but other than that, a lot of deshelling, a lot of chopping, just a lot of ingredients. All right, that looks good. Let's split this up. And get our shrimp in the fridge. Once you get everything separated, just get out as much air as you can from each bag. So you have maximum contact of the marinade to the shrimp. And in the fridge we go. Now we're going to start the soup stock while these are sitting in the fridge. Alright, to do the stock, I'm starting with 8 cups of water. Heat on high, of course. We're going to bring this to a boil. We're going to combine that with 1 cup of the wine.
just a few tablespoons of tomato paste. I'm going to use half this can, so I'm going to use three ounces. And I'm going to get a clean spoon. There we go. Mix this in. Now all I have to do, once I get this paste dissolved a little bit here, is put in our shells and tails. And we're going to bring it to a boil. As soon as it starts to boil, we're going to come down to a simmer. And we want this to reduce the liquid by half. So if you're doing a small batch, might take you 10, maybe 15 minutes. It's probably going to take me about 20 of simmer time to let it reduce. What this is going to do is, again, draw the flavor out of those shells and tails and then concentrate it. All right, there we go. In they go. Should have just enough liquid in there to really cover the shells. That's all we're looking for. Perfect. Sometimes I amaze myself. Just get these in there. Once it hits a boil, which shouldn't take that long, I'm going to kick it down to a simmer. This is probably going to take again about 20 minutes for me and then our shrimp will be done in the fridge. I'll take this off and we'll strain it and then be ready to put the soup together. Now that we've reduced down to about half the liquid volume, I'm going to go ahead and strain everything out, get rid of all the solids, so we're just left with the concentrated flavor stock. And now we can just discard the shells and tails, we're done with those. We've got a nice, extremely pungent, beautiful smelling shrimp stack. Let's make the soup. Now it's time for the good stuff. All right, this is going to start out like a lot of other soups. We are going to saute the onions and the celery. I've got uh, just a couple cups of chopped onion in here. You can use a couple big ones. I used four little ones. And then I've got one whole bunch of chopped celery down underneath. Not real fine, nothing unusual. We're just going to put in a couple tablespoons of olive oil to start the saute. Not bad at all considering it's going in so much soup. And uh, I'm doing a big batch, so this is probably going to take me about 20 minutes. If you're doing a small one, 5 to 10. Just get them nice and translucent, soft, slightly browned. You know the routine. You can see that we're starting to brown. You can smell the caramelization. This is what you want. Right at this point, you want to see some browning. You want it to stick a little bit. Now we put in the shrimp stock. And our four cans of coconut milk. We want to turn the heat up to high. We want to bring this to a boil. Whoa! A little kerplunk action there. And last, we want to put in the rest of our tomato paste. Again, just about, oh, almost lost my towel. About three ounces.
Stir this in real well, let it come up to temp. Scrape the bottom so you get all that good brown bits up into the soup. That's all flavor. And as soon as this comes to a boil, which will probably take about 10 minutes here for this batch, we'll be ready for the next step. Well, there's not a whole lot left to do now. The next step, while this is coming up to temp, got a few minutes till it's at a boil, is to make our simple brew. I've got one level cup of whole wheat flour, as opposed to all-purpose. I'm not real worried about how this is going to come out, because in everything I've used it for, it really hasn't totally shifted the flavor. It still tastes awesome, and it's a lot better than all-purpose for you. And then we're going to mix in one quart of fat-free half-and-half. Tell you what, I'm running out of big bowls whenever I do stuff with a lot of ingredients like this. I use up just about everything I have. I got a lot of nice big plastic stuff, but don't really have time to be washing stuff in between because I'm a one man band. My wife doesn't cook. So I'm going to whisk this all together. Just need to get it all mixed in well. And then, as soon as the soup is at a good boil, we are going to add this to it. Then we're going to reduce the heat down to a simmer. And as it starts to come together, cool a little bit, it will thicken. This is not only going to give us the beautiful creamy flavors to go with the acidic lime and the spices to give us that authentic Thai flavor, but it'll turn it into a thicker bisque as opposed to a watery soup which is the whole point. You just need to make sure it's really mixed well. You should see a little bit of foam developing. And because we're using the fat-free half and half, instead of even 2% milk, or whole milk, or whew, heavy cream, which tastes awesome, but doesn't look awesome on my belt line, this is going to be very, very healthy. Make sure you don't have any dry chunks of flour in here. Scrape your sides. Get the bottom. Alright, almost to a boil. Scrape the bottom of this too. Shouldn't have anything burning, but you want to get all that browning up. Starting to smell good. I can smell the sweetness of the coconut. It's not real pungent, but it's definitely unique. It smells like Mounds Bars or Almond Joy. And like I said before, if you can find the light coconut milk, definitely use that. I wish I could have, but you know what? I spent enough time driving around three different stores as it was, really didn't feel like going around, and, and it's not like they were out of stock, they just, some didn't carry it at all, some didn't, Walmart was out of stock of the regular coconut milk. They had coconut cream, which is thicker and heavier, then they have like a really thick one which is used for drinks, like pina coladas, and then they have coconut milk, which you saw here, and then they have coconut water, which is totally different, it's more of a drink. But they do make a light coconut milk. It's just, I don't know where you get it. There's a couple stores that I don't usually go to, but next time I'm there, I'll definitely look for it there. But Sweet Bay doesn't have it. Publix doesn't have it. Cash and Carry only had regular. That's where I got this. And then Walmart only had regular, but they were out of stock. All right, we're at a boil, so now we're going to put in our roux. There we go. Whisk this around a little bit. drop down to a simmer.
I'm going to give this about 10 minutes. Let these flavors come together, let it start to thicken up. And we'll be ready for, I think, the last step. Putting the shrimp in and the marinade spices. Just a pinch of salt is all I'm going to add to this. Should be right where I estimated. Between a gallon and a half and two gallons. I don't think I have that much shrimp to go in here, so yeah, should be right about a gallon and a half. Maybe a gallon and three quarter. Beautiful. Alright. I'm going to let this simmer for 10 minutes and we'll be back. Now we're nice and thickened up. Time to put in the good stuff, the shrimp. Make sure you get in as much of the marinade out of the bag as possible. Just gently put it in. Then these shrimp are going to cook pretty quickly even though we're on a low simmer here. The pot's hot. So it's only going to take seven or eight minutes max for all these shrimp to cook perfectly. Oh man, that smells good. Tons of lime juice. Beautiful flavors. Beautiful aroma. Try not to go kerplop and end up with a bunch of soup all over me here. Oh, it smells so good. Garlic. Beautiful. One more. Yeah, baby. Mm -mm. I cannot wait to try this in about 15 minutes. All right. I'm just going to stir this in. Give it six, seven, eight minutes or so. And we'll be ready for the last step. Almost there. Okay, last step. We're going to put in four more tablespoons of cilantro, so about half of what I have left here. We're going to put in the rest of the lime. Oh, what's the word? Uh, rind. The zest, that's it. And we're just going to do a tablespoon of salt. So not bad. I don't want to oversalt anything like this I cook. I'm kind of getting used to not having a lot of salt in general. I never tended to cook with it a lot. I would season my stuff in the bowl or on the plate. But I haven't been doing that at all since doing HLO. Absolutely nothing after what I cook. So I'm cooking it about like the minimum I would like it, just to make the flavors taste right. So if anybody else has some, they can add however much they like in the bowl. So that's it. For a gallon and a half, nobody's going to complain about that. I'm just going to stir this in. Give it another five minute simmer. And we're ready to plate. And we are finally done. See? Very easy to make. A little bit of prep work, but no sweat producing the bisque. Very nice texture. It's got a good thickness. You can see it coats the spoon, so it's not real thin. Not a lot of aroma. I was expecting more, but it's really very mild. I, I can smell a bit of the lime and a bit of the cilantro, but that's really about it. Coconut died way down. Of course, I don't smell the veggies. All right, well, hey, time to try it. All right. Well, let's see how I did. And I do have what's left of the Pinot here, surprisingly, it's pretty darn good. Not saying I would drink it regularly, but I'm not going to turn it down. The wife had the rest. Nice. I really like the thickness. That fat-free half and half turned out real well. Coats the shrimp. Got a lot of the zest in here. I can see a little bit of the 
uh, cayenne sticking around, so I should have some sweetness from that. All right, let's try it. Hope it's not too hot. Mmm. Wow. A lot of the lime flavor coming through. It's very crisp. It could stand to be hotter, as in temperature. So I'm going to crank the heat up. And just get it back to a nice hot temperature. I'll just microwave it. Very creamy. Just the right amount of salt. I mean, it's, it definitely has that milky but zingy, zesty Thai flavor to it. The lime really adds to it. All right, cool. I'm happy. I love shrimp, and this is another winner. Winner, winner, shrimp dinner. So there you guys go. There is a healthy, kind of expensive, but worth it, Thai shrimp bisque. See you guys next time.